Using the NRF24L01 transceiver modules, you can monitor and control different processes. You can either use a pair of the long-range NRF24L01 PA plus LNA transceiver modules or you can use a pair of the short-range NRF24L01 transceiver modules. You can also make a pair by using the NRF24L01 PA plus LNA with the regular small size nrf 24 L01 transceiver module. The communication between the two NRF24 L01 transceiver modules is very simple as explained in my previous four tutorials. In this tutorial, I explained how to make a long range 12 volt battery voltage monitoring system using a pair of NRF24 L01 transceiver modules with the HC05 Bluetooth module. I was able to monitor the voltage of a 12 volt battery using my Android cell phone application. In the other tutorial, I designed a long-range industrial temperature monitoring system and this time, instead of using the Android cell phone application, I displayed the temperature values on the OLED display module. In this project, as well, I just use a pair of NRF24L01 transceiver modules and only one temperature sensor. So, all I want to say is that it's very simple to use a pair of NRF24L01 transceiver modules and a single sensor. But there might be situations when you need to monitor multiple sensors. So in my third tutorial, I explained how to connect multiple sensors with the Arduino and display the values on the serial monitor. In this tutorial, I have explained how to use an array to store all the sensors values and then how to access each sensor value on the receiver side. In this tutorial as well, I just use a pair of NRF24L01 transceiver modules. But this time I used multiple sensors on the transmitter side instead of using one sensor. In my fourth tutorial, I used a pair of the long range NRF24L01 PA plus LNA transceiver modules for controlling the RC jet plane. I was able to control the up, down and left right movement of the RC plane. I was also able to control the speed of the brushless DC motor. In this tutorial, I used multiple sensors on the transmitter side to control the RC jet plane. The things get a little complicated when it comes to multiple NRF24L01 transmitters and a single receiver. This is what I am going to explain in this video. But first, a few words about the sponsor of this video. PCB boards used in this project are sponsored by the PCBA company. Only $5 for 10 PCBs and $30 in total for 20 PCBs assembly. Besides this, PCBA also provides a great variety of services including aluminum PCB, rigid flex, metal core, flexible, high frequency, high TG, thick copper, HDI and LED PCBs. The sign up process hardly takes one minute and you are welcomed with a $5 welcome bonus. What are you waiting for? Go and get your first prototype order for free. Click on the first link in the description. As I said earlier, the things get a little complicated when it comes to multiple sensors connected with multiple transmitters. The sensors values from the multiple transmitters based on the NRF24L01 transceiver modules are sent to the single receiver. Now at the receiver side you should know exactly which value belongs to which sensor and from which transmitter the sensor value is received. These are the transmitter and receiver circuits that I used in the long range industrial temperature monitoring system. Now to explain the idea of how to use multiple NRF24L01 transmitters with the single receiver, I made another transmitter circuit. For the demonstration purposes, I will use only two transmitters, but you can increase the number of transmitters, which I will later explain in this video. So as you can see, both the transmitters are exactly the same. I have connected two potentiometers, which I will use as the sensors. You can also increase the number of sensors as I have already used an array in the programming which can be used to store values of the multiple sensors. The two transmitters are powered up. This is transmitter number one and this is transmitter number two. Now to check how these transmitters communicate with the receiver, 
I started off by powering up the receiver. D1 is the value coming from the transmitter number 1 and D2 is the value coming from the transmitter number 2. The reason I'm using potentiometers because they can be easily find in any electronic shop. Anyhow, I know exactly which value is coming from the transmitter number 1 and which value is coming from the transmitter number 2. The question is how Arduino knows this? It's very simple. Along with the sensor value, I also send the header value. The header values of both the transmitters are different. I'm using a header value of 231 for the transmitter number 1 and 434 for the transmitter number 2. These header values remain constant throughout the communication. I will explain this in the programming section. Next, I did the same exact thing using the RF24 network library which can be used to make a complete network. This time, I displayed the values on the I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD. If you have more than 6 NRF24 L01 transceiver modules and you want to perform one-way or two-way communication, then I highly recommend using the RF24 network library. Now you know exactly what you are going to learn after watching this video. Without any further delay, let's get started. Means and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. You might be thinking about the maximum number of NRF24 L01 transceiver modules that can be used in a wireless sensor network. A single NRF24 L01 module can actively listen up to six other modules at the same time. V01 node is the base and all other nodes are children of either that node or of another. Each node can have up to five children and this can go five levels deep, which means we can create a network of total 3125 nodes. Each node must be defined with a 15-bit address which precisely describes the position of the node within the tree. To keep things simpler, I will only stick to the level 1. You can use 6 transmitters at the same time to which you can connect multiple sensors. Now let's take a look at the circuit diagram. This is the circuit diagram of the transmitter number 1 which is very simple. A potentiometer is connected with the analog pin A0. A decoupling capacitor of 10 microfarad is connected with the VCC and ground pins of the NRF24 L01 module. The VCC and ground pins are connected with the Arduino's 3.3 volt and ground pins. CE is connected with pin 9. CSN is connected with pin 10. SCK is connected with 13. MOSI is connected with pin 11 and the MISO pin is connected with pin 12 of the Arduino. This is the circuit diagram of the transmitter number 2 which is exactly the same. The same way you can make 4 more transmitter circuits and if you want you can also increase the number of sensors. Now let's take a look at the receiver circuit diagram. The NRF24 L01 connection with the Arduino remains exactly the same. An I2C supported 128 by 64 OLED display module is connected with the Arduino. The SCL and SDA pins of the OLED display module are connected with the A5 and A4 pins while the VCC and ground pins of the display module are connected with the 5 volt and ground pins of the Arduino. I also added male headers for connecting the 5 volt regulated power supply. The PCB designing and soldering I have already explained in my previous tutorial based on the long-range wireless industrial temperature monitoring system. Now let's take a look at the programming. As usual, before you start the programming, first of all, make sure you download all the necessary libraries from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. Both the codes are exactly the same except these two values stored at the zero location in the array. So, first of all, let's take a look at the transmitter number one programming. Maximum of the code I have already explained in my previous tutorials. 
I define this array for storing the sensor values and the header. At location 0, I will store the header and at location 1, 2 and 3, I can store the sensor values. If you are using more sensors, then you can simply increase the array size. Currently, I'm using only one sensor, which is connected with the airlock pin A0. We simply read the airlock pin A0 and store the value in variable VR data. Next, in the data array at location 0, I store the number 231, which will act as the code to identify the transmitter number 1 and then at location 1 in the data array we store the sensor value. If you have other sensor then store the value at location 2 and so on. Finally we send the data array. Now let's take a look at the code of transmitter number 2. The transmitter number 2 code is exactly the same except the value stored at location 1 which is 434. Now if you have another transmitter all you need is to use a different number make sure to use different header values otherwise the receiver won't be able to identify from which transmitter it's receiving the data now let's take a look at the receiver side programming I edit libraries for the OLED display module I defined a data array of the same size and type I also define two variables data1 and data2 that are used to store the values coming from the transmitter number 1 and transmitter number 2. All the other instructions I have already explained in my previous tutorial based on the long-range wireless industrial temperature monitoring system. So, after the data is received, then we use these two conditions to check whether the data received belongs to transmitter number 1 or transmitter number 2. If the Arduino C231 at location 0, the sensor value is stored in data 1 and is then displayed on the OLED display module. If the Arduino C434 at location 0, the sensor value is stored in data 2 and is then displayed on the OLED display module. These are the instructions used to check if the connection is lost and all of the other instructions are used to display the values on the OLED display module. I have already uploaded the transmitters and receiver codes. Now let's watch this in action. Now we will implement the same idea using the RF24 network library. The transmitters will remain exactly the same. I made only one change to the receiver circuit and that is I replaced this I2C supported OLED display module with the I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD module. This time I'm using the female headers for the 16 into 2 LCD. So this is the only modification that I did while everything else remains exactly the same. Now let's take a look at the programming. This time in addition to the RF24 library, I also added the RF24 network library. This code is written for the transmitter number 1 which is node 01 and the other code is written for the transmitter number 2 which is node 02. These two nodes communicate with a single receiver or base node 00. You can see both the codes are exactly the same except the node's addresses. For the transmitter number 1, the node address is 01 while for the transmitter number 2, the node address is 02. You can copy and paste the same code to make another node 03 and so on. Over here, I'm also using the data array. 
if in case you want to connect multiple sensors in this code there is no need to add a header because this time the node addresses 0, 01 and 0, 02 will be used to identify the transmitters rest of the code is self-explanatory we simply read the sensor store the sensor value in the array at location 0 and then send the data array to the receiver which is the base node 00. Now let's take a look at the receiver side programming. I added some libraries for the I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD. I also defined a timer that will control the 16 into 2 LCD. The address of this node is 00 which is the base node. I also defined data array of the same size and type. The data1 and data2 variables will store the sensor values. In the loop section we start by constantly checking whether there is any incoming data. If so we read the data, store it into the data array. Next we use the two if conditions to check whether we are receiving the data from node 01 or node 02. In such a case, we use the header dot from underscore node attribute in order to get information from which node does the data come from. In case the incoming data is from the node 01, we will store it in data 1. And in case the incoming data is from the node 02, we will store it in data 2. The LCD display function is executed after every 200 milliseconds to display the values on the 16 into 2 LCD. I have already uploaded the transmitters and receiver codes. Now let's watch this in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.